We had a day yesterday. Loki had to go in for his biopsy. And the, the vet said, oh, we won't need to do an all-day sedation. It'll be mild. So we go we go to pick him up. And what they 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 didn't have, it wasn't as invasive as it could have been. They had to put, stick a long needle into him to get a piece of the tumor because of where it is, you know. But still, they couldn't just stab the dang dog with the needle. They had to, you know, sedate him to do it. So we go and pick him up. And the first thing I notice is Sarah went in to get him while I'm sitting out in the car. And uh, I'm sitting there waiting with my phone. And out comes one of the vet techs carrying the dog. So I'm like, mild? Loki was so nice. stoned. Like, amazingly fucked up yesterday. Like, okay. Have you ever been, like, super fucked up in your life? That's him with his face just crammed into the seat. Baby. That, that is an amazing, that is a special kind of, of, of fucked up right there. Simba's usually super drunk for about 12 hours after he goes to the vet. He just staggers around and falls over and sleeps. He also had a tongue situation that he couldn't get under control for quite a while. Maybe. Um, so yeah, yesterday it was it was it was a little exhausting because we had to not only did we have to pick him up and look after him for a while while he was recovering, he is also a He's not a violent drunk, he's not a mean drunk, but he is a combative drunk. You've I'm always... fine, I can do it myself. I'm you're drunk. You you yeah, I'm fine. You're you're not falling down. You're I'm fine. Yeah. That that's him because uh <laughs> he started he gets a little bit uh you know feeling a little bit better and then all of a sudden he's dragging himself by his front two paws across the carpet. Like, no, I can do this. Buddy, your back legs are... I I got this. Shut up. Fine. I said I'm fine. And it Poor was, baby. It, His it, little crossed eyes. Yeah, he was so nice. out of it. <laughs> he didn't even know... He, he didn't... Let's, the, the, the best... We got him home and we put him in his bed and he still... That whole tongue thing was going on. Poor and baby. Poor, poor boy. He's a good boy, but uh, hopefully we'll find out. <sighs> this is the point where we find out if if we can treat the tumor, and I hope we can. Yeah, you know, I hope so. This is where he's we, a good boy. he is a very good boy. Love him. Um, and it's a giant pain in the ass. We love him. But yeah, so so it's it's very exhausted, very very stressed, and very. He's better now. He's being a complete butthead all night tonight. <laughs> But so that, that that is kind of what encourages me about him in general, because he is, in terms of treating him, he is so nice. stubborn. Yeah. That that, that makes they me... They still have the energy to be a nike. <laughs> There's hope. He, he was trying to play tonight. He's like, hey, come get, come ball. Let's do ball. I'm like, hey, little nike. Other people are having a bit of a time too. They're called the human race and they're tired. They're just as exhausting. Hey guys, let's do the nonsense. Get this. That. Are you ready, computer? Are you going to fucking work for fucking once to fucking night? Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment we like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? And uh, I did. I, did, I don't even have the intro shot up on the screen. I don't care. There, there we go. Uh, and yeah, yeah, whatever. Um. So uh, last week we had what I tend to call, not so lovingly, abandoned internet day. I don't think it was that bad this year. So what the rest? Of, oh, you you say that? You say that? What the rest of the world refers to as April Fools? which I hate with a burning, flaming passion that's just only increased every year the internet has continued to exist. I miss Think Geek on April Fool's Day because they did some good shit. Yeah, and they're not around anymore. So now we have to deal with people doing shit like this. 
Navistar suspends worker after active shooter April Fool's joke at Springfield Factory. That's not funny. New Carlisle woman is in jail after deputy said she falsely reported an active shooter at the Navistar plant. Major Chris Clark said the worker at the plant texted her sister saying there's a report of an active shooter. A sister then called 911, which prompted a countywide law enforcement response from the plant. She said there was a guy that got fired yesterday. He came with the gun. They're barricaded with lights off in the office. The sister said to a 911 dispatcher, she sent me a text. I'm afraid to text her if they're barricaded hiding. So first of all, fuck you for doing that to your sister. Yeah. Jesus Christ. How did... How if did I you... did that to my sister... Also, what did you think... If you did that to your sister, what did you think she was going to fucking do? It's going to call my, the my cops. Sis my sister would fucking kill me. Yeah, but until you know it's a joke, you're going to fucking call the cops. Yeah. Generally... Clark said deputies were on the scene within two minutes and quickly entered the facility looking for the reported active shooter. They were eventually alerted the report was an April Fool's joke. The worker identified as Pamela Cisco, 57 of New Carlisle was arrested. Cisco is due in court Friday morning after being charged with <laughs> inducing panic and disrupting public services. Spoken for Navasar said she was immediately suspended by the company. What the fucking... How is that... Which part of that was supposed to be funny? Yeah, what's the punchline there? Oh, you thought I was dying! Yeah. yeah. It's not... That's not funny. This People don't understand... Like, good Christ. This is not a joke. What's the no. fucking punchline? If the like, punchline April Fool's prank is like my nephew used to put rubber snakes in the fridge for my sister to find. <laughs> How did that child grow to adulthood without being murdered? Or she would make him cream puffs filled with toothpaste. Oh, she did try to murder him. Okay. <laughs> okay, that, that they would do little pranks on each other. You know, that's a prank because nobody gets hurt. You take one bite and you're like, this tastes like toothpaste. Like, I just, I, I don't even. Ugh. Our definition of prank has just really gone. Thank you, YouTube. I blame YouTube. That is, YouTube hasn't helped. Like, like, apparently the definition of prank is to come up with somebody and hit them with a two by four, and that's a prank. Right. You got prank. What? No. That's... Oh, you got a concussion. I got you. Yeah, if if the punchline of your joke is someone else is in misery to entertain me, that's not a punchline. That's, that's you're not... you're a sadist. Yeah, you're just a bad person. You're you're fu there's something broken in your fucking little brain. Speaking of something broken in your fucking little brain, let's go to the happiest place on earth. Um, spoilers, it really is. Um, uh, a, 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 it's, it's not over. It's still going. I spent $15,000 man arrested at Disney Resort in Florida after refusing temperature check. I want to point out this out. It wasn't even a mask. It wasn't even a fucking mask thing. It was... I won't stand still long enough for you to check me with a thermometer. That doesn't even have to touch me. It's one of those Which little... is about three seconds. Yeah, it's one of those little thermometers. You point at someone's bare skin. Right. And Ooh. no! Man was arrested. My hair salon does it. You walk in. Boop. Okay, let's go cut your hair. Man was arrested after refusing a temperature screening at Disney Springs in Florida. He told authorities he couldn't be told to leave. Because he had spent $15,000 on his vacation. Incorrect. The man, Kelly Sillis, a tourist from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, bypassed the Orlando attraction's medical screening in February, refused to get his temperature checked when asked by Disney employees. Body camera video released recently showed Sillis refusing to leave when asked by law enforcement. Quote, I spent $15,000 to come here, Silla said, after a deputy told him that he was officially considering to be trespassing. 
Deputies and a security manager at Disney Springs had approached Silas outside the Boathouse restaurant. Court said Silas argued with the security manager, yelling at him before the park manager told him he was, quote, no longer welcome at the park today. Should be no longer welcome at the park ever. Yeah. A woman could be heard asking officers not to arrest Silas. Quote, he's not listening. All he had to do was get his temperature checked. That's it. At another point in the video, Silas asked whether authorities could take his temperature before forcing him to leave. I like oh, that. Oh no, it's too late for that shit now. You cause all this fucking commotion. The shit comes down on you. You're like, okay, I guess I'll do it now. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, it's too late for that. It's consequences time. Yeah, he was at, he, he asked authorities to take his temperature before forcing him to leave. Someone responded, they would do so at jail. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna go to another one of orlando's finest attractions so Silas so also claims to be a disney stockholder at another point that doesn't matter i, I don't, they don't think, care yeah I don't, I don't think you understand how how stocks work um you don't own the company in a sense of you, you you're yeah. controlling it you own a piece of it in terms of they kick profit to you sometimes yeah. You, you, if they get, they make money, you make a little money because you. And a company as big as Disney, I'm yeah. here to tell you, your 50 shares <laughs> impress nobody. Yeah, it's like you, you, you get a little. You've essentially loaned the company money, and they're paying you back. That's kind of how it works. It's not like I own your ass now. I, I can... Look at the bright side. Think about the new and exciting characters he's going to meet in the Orlando penal system. Fucking hell, yes. That's that's like Disney on an acid trip. Yeah, like there you thought there were only seven dwarves? Oh no. There's methy, <laughs> drunky, douchey. <laughs> you don't even know. Stabby. Stabby's the best one. Stabby. Stabby's the best one. Naked. <laughs> Oh my god. No, just I spent fifteen thousand. All right, I don't think you quite understand how capitalism works. Yeah, they don't care. They don't. And also all of that trouble for three seconds of your time in a non-invasive way. They didn't even have to touch your ass. You're like, no. no. They just point a little thing at you. Sometimes I get asked to brush my bangs aside. I was reading an article. You know I, do? I do it. I was, not that hard. I was reading an article earlier today about the basis of all this, that it's the illusion of choice. The idea, the, the foundation, everything's like built on, I have a choice to do this yeah. so I, I can choose to. And it's not really a choice. It's just, you know, a selection. We're all just giant children. Because if you take, if you, if you exercise the ability to say, I don't want to do this, Nothing good will come of that choice. Yeah. But you just want to have it for country. It's just for the fucking sake. You just want to stamp your feet and pretend you're in charge. But then you're going to get sent to your room without dinner. In this case, it's not your room. It's the taxpayer's room. Um, More Florida. We have one going into the jail. Here's one coming out and probably going right back in again. While leaving Florida, while leaving lockup, Floridians stole jail webcam. As he was preparing to leave jail after posting bond, a Florida man decided that it was the perfect time to steal a $60 webcam off a desk in the county lockup. Steve Moran, 35, was arrested last month for criminal mischief and booked into the uh, Indian River County Jail on a misdemeanor charge. While Moran was awaiting, awaiting release in the booking area, he disconnected a Logitech webcam from a jail computer, placed the device in his pocket. Moran subsequently departed the lockup upon posting a $1,000 bond. Investigators subsequently identified Moran as the alleged culprit and, culprit and arrested him Thursday for depriving the county jail of right and use property. Then later freed of posting $500 on the misdemeanor theft count. So... You could have just bought the, you could have bought 12 webcams. I don't That's know if my math is correct. Probably there. not. No, it's, it's less than you're, you're probably it's closer to like. I majored eight, in art. Eight or nine. 
and I don't even use that degree. It's, I just... You're st you know why it's hard to get away with stealing a camera? It's a camera! And you know what the odds are that there's more than one camera in the law enforcement office? Hi. For 60 bucks. And you get a shitty webcam now for like, this was not worth it. But you already like, this is not going to endear anyone in the penal system to your antics either. And I kind of know why he, why he did it, because for a while there, and this is this is the fucked up part for a while there, like all of last year, there was a bit of a short of a webcams because everybody suddenly had to work at home. We had all these Zoom meetings, everybody needed a webcam. But now they're back in stores. The shortage has abated. They're easily found. That used to be, you couldn't even find like the twenty dollars shitty webcams for now. Love there's going to be a money. shortage on ketchup. What? Yeah, because of the because of the global pancetta, there's going to be a shortage on ketchup. What? Yeah, I don't know what? if it, I I Why? don't know if it's a factory worker thing or, but yeah, we're approaching a ketchup shortage. Oh God, people have to eat actually eat their food without covering it in syrup juice listen i really like french fries <laughs> and i am not irish enough to like my french fries with fucking vinegar if if you have to have if you have you can enjoy the ketchup but if you have to have ketchup to eat something it means it wasn't cooked right or it's french fries well it's get some mayonnaise then Ugh. Some gravy. No. No. You've just lost the entire Canadian audience. I hope you realize. I don't care. <laughs> oh, okay, we're moving to South Carolina. Of course we are. Good. Um Tartar sauce for French fries. I'm worried about you. That's not okay. Um, so there's a phrase that's the walk of shame. Yeah, that that is uh, normally that is 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 you getting from point A to point B after a hookup. Yeah. And the clothes you were wearing last night, makeup all fucked up. Very important there. Very important <laughs> point in the clothes you were in them. Oh, in in like. In, November 1st walks of shame are the best because everybody's in remnants of Halloween costumes and trying to look like they're not. Naked man says he was doing walk of shame. Like the Game of Thrones version? Maybe. Yeah, that's the other was problem. There a mean nun with a bell behind him? A man who police saw strolling naked this morning on a South Carolina street told officers he was doing a, quote, walk of shame as penance for cheating on his wife. So, yes, the Game of Thrones version. Investigators say Michael Boatman, 41, was spotted by a sheriff's deputy around 1.10 a.m. as he walked in a Spartanburg street with, quote, just a clear bag over his genitals and, quote, a blunt in his hand. Boatman, not reported, explained he was doing a walk of shame, which he needed to, needed to complete for his wife. A second officer noted that Boatman had said that he had cheated on his wife and was doing a walk of shame. Boatman also reportedly referenced Adam and Eve from the Bible, stating that he was willing to go to jail for his acts. So the wife wasn't walking around behind him, ringing a bell and chanting shame? No. Now, what about, I've, I've lost some respect for her. I want to remember that he said he was willing to go to jail, but while being questioned, Bowman allegedly sought to run away from deputies. <laughs> which I is mean, it? Willing doesn't mean it's plan A. Michael, which is it? Are you willing to go to jail or are you not willing to go to jail? I'm willing. It's not plan A. <laughs> being questioned uh, after being placed in a squad car. Bowman said he would try to escape from jail and asked a deputy to shoot him. Sir. 
You might be overcorrecting just a little bit. Like, like, my dude. If it... <sighs> Like, yeah, you might lose your wife over it. You don't have to lose your life over it. Or your pants. Where did your pants go? Well, what? you know, he had a he had a sandwich baggie. <laughs> oh, that makes it okay. Look, it, it, <laughs> at least he sealed in the freshness. <laughs> it's the important thing. And it wasn't gonna get wet. Oh, that's oh. you got a story to tell in jail, sir. <laughs> uh, OK, well, we're a little late for St. Patrick's Day, but uh, that that is the stop of a, 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 a couple, literal couple in uh, in uh, Pennsylvania. Um, I, I don't think this is quite how Patrick did it. I could be wrong. Woman charged with arson says she and boyfriend were trying to get rid of snakes. Huh. Oh, this is Louisiana. It's just being reported in Pennsylvania. I mean, to be fair, that's kind of how Patrick did it. He just bur he did burn people. And the snakes are an allegory for the Druid <clears throat> and ancient religion. Louisiana woman accused of setting fires told investigators she and her boyfriend were trying to get rid of snakes. Robert Lee Ramirez, 34, uh, faces two counts of arson and remained at large Tuesday. Uh, Laura Ashley Lee, 34, also of Leesville, was released on $3,500 bond. According to the statement, investigators say Ramirez set fires along the road, uh, multiple fires along the road, and in woods owned by others around their home. Is there some kind of ordinance in Leesville that because it's Leesville, you have to have Lee somewhere in your name? <laughs> They're both Robert Lee Ramirez, <laughs> Laura Ashley Lee from Leesville. Is that like a thing? Look, I'm not going to make the uh, the inbreeding joke, but. So, like, oh, yeah. not like we set a fire in our house to kill snakes. That had nested there. Like we decided to burn down the whole fucking yes, woods. To drive them out. To where to where I know not whence. But you know that's just gonna drive them toward your home. Because <laughs> that's the only thing not on fire. <laughs> like you're forcing them in. Imagine you just you wake up one morning, you look out your window, there are these two motherfuckers running around setting fires in your fucking woods. Oi! Snakes. Was this their first go-to? I mean, did, do you think they even bothered to Google this shit, or they just went straight for the? You think they just went they straight for the fire? For fire. I'm gonna guess they went straight to fire. <laughs> Like, I tell you what, I am I am that person that whenever I'm confronted with a problem, the first thing I do is Google how to fix problem. Yeah. No. Well, to be fair, the first thing I do is ask Dan. <laughs> and then if he doesn't know, I Google it. No, it was like, you know, I had a couple of blueberry bushes. I needed to know how to transplant them, how to transplant blueberry bush. You didn't just here. bust out a flamethrower? No, I didn't I just bust out a fucking flamethrower. <laughs> And you know what? The, the people are pointing out on the channel. The, the, the worst thing about these is that these are probably most of these snakes are probably not even the least bit of a problem for them. Like I don't know much about snakes native to Louisiana. Probably a cotton mouth would have been the worst thing to have to. Con maybe a, I don't know if coral if king snakes or king snake coral snakes, whichever one. I don't know if those are down there, but the worst one is it typically is, tends to be a cotton mouth. The rest of them are either con are some form of constrictor or non-venomous. So you're just fucking with the snakes. They, they aren't hurting nobody. My aunt had snakes that had a nest and had babies under her front porch. Because, like, the, it was old concrete and there was a little nook in the steps, I guess. Mm. And we just popped up and down those steps real fast. Until what? winter. <laughs> even, and 
I, you know, when you set things to get, we set a fire to get rid of one species, you're getting rid of them all. Yeah. So you're just like, you're like, you can't that's... like whisper to the fire. Only the snakes. No. <laughs> it's like that scene in fucking Bambi, man. <sighs> fucking traumatic. What the fuck's wrong with you? I, I really do not want to be like that person. Like whenever you're presented with an issue, your first response is, oh, let's set it on fire. Yeah. That should maybe be like your second or third response. Not the first one. I would argue in most cases it should be further down the list than that. Yeah. I think there's there's very specific situations in which fire is the answer, and most yeah. of them are not involved in home ownership. But in terms of cost benefit analysis, fire is very cheap. Until it's a you very have expensive. a home and it's ruled in arson and the insurance won't pay. Then it's pretty expensive. <laughs> The last one comes from Norway and this motherfucker. I, I I would think it'd be really hard to start shit in Norway to, to just but somebody had to do it between Norway and Sweden no less. I mean I feel like if you just ran out in the street and yelled Odin was a pussy you're going to start some shit. I ain't going to piss off a whole bunch of you know white supremacists. Anyway Norwegian caught trying to dodge quarantine by skiing over border. This was his plan here. Norwegian returning home tried to evade quarantine rules by skiing over the Norway-Sweden border, but the attempt did not end well. The 50-year-old had to be rescued after he ran into bad weather. Later handed over to police and now faces prosecution. Under Norwegian law, the man should have tested net negative and spent 10 days in quarantine in a hotel. He wanted to return to Norway to get a hold of some documents, then return to Sweden where he has a work in progress. But to avoid quarantine, he decided to cross the border through the mountains. After 25 kilometers, the skier got caught in bad weather. He was first rescued by a reindeer breeder, only in Norway, and he was handed over to two fishermen a few kilometers away until rescue services arrived. It was wet and cold with fairly high mountains. Like, I'm not even 50 yet. And even I'm sitting here thinking, oh yeah, skiing across the border? Fuck that. You're pretty close to the top of the planet there. I feel like bad weather is probably not a surprise. Yeah. Uh, I, I get... Like we had rain here yesterday, but the back band of the storm that was in the mountains was snow. Because mountains. Mountains, Gandalf. <laughs> And we're not anywhere near the top of the fucking planet. Arkel said there is no way he was getting away with this. No. I mean, first of all, you know, he thought I mean, he could just sweet it. <laughs> I'm not 50. I'm looking at 50, but I'm not 50. But even regardless, I, even now, I'm sitting here going, fuck that. No, sir. No, thank you. Shit, even the idea of walking around the mall for a few hours makes me go, nah. <laughs> nah, I don't think so. I don't think so. Th this, this, this whole fucking idea. <laughs> what the fuck? I can do it. And it's for documents. That's the That's the crazy thing. Yeah, was there nobody that could mail them to you? Right. I would have, like, seriously, I would have mailed my neighbor a key. Right? Like, don't they have mail there? They do. It's I a would civilized have, I would have gone to the local store. I would have made a copy of my key. I would have mailed it to my neighbor. I would have said, hey, could you go in, grab these documents? They're here. Could you put them in an envelope and mail them to me overnight? <laughs> That would have been the my obvious thought. solution was to ski through the mountains to sneak over the border. And here's to make it even better. Um, rescuers then hand him in over to police for violating pandemic rules. He is currently in a local local hotel doing the quarantine he had tried to avoid. <laughs> All right, you could take my temperature. <laughs> We had a bookend this week. So, I mean, yeah, you're, you're, some, you're the very thing you were trying not to. I, I can get around this. I'm smart. No, you're not. The amount of work people will put in to avoid 
something so easy. Just because fuck, it's it's, it's just obstinacy. It's just you're, you know yeah. you're you're not but my you dad. You spend more effort trying to avoid it. You're not my boss. Yeah. You can't tell me what to do. I can do whatever I want to do. You won't tell me things. Because shut up. Yes, that's the first thing we've learned this week. That if you're the, the if the amount of effort you're putting in to not do the thing is just it's if you are one of those it's the principle of the thing sort of motherfuckers. Yeah. If it would be exponentially harder to do your plan than to just do the thing, just do the thing. And I say this, somebody has ADHD and executive dysfunction and the lengths I will go to, to procrastinate from doing the simplest fucking task. Mm -hmm. And still. You're just gonna let people tell you what to do. That's a charity. And then that's one short step. And then it's all of a sudden China is invading and Wolverines. Well, that's their new thing with the vaccine passports. You know, <sighs> it's just that's ushering true. in the new, it's ushering in the new world order. Did you see Dr. Fucking Drew was like, what, what, what do you think would happen if you had every time you had to travel, you had to have documentation of your vaccinations? Motherfucker, you do. Yeah. Y'all, apparently your ass ain't never been out where, outside of the United States. Because I've gone to Ireland a few times and yeah. And when you leave, they ask you, like, have you spent any time around livestock? Because that's the thing. Like, we already do that. I flew to England. I had to have my vaccine. I had to have vaccinations before yeah. I could, could go to fucking. <sighs> We've learned that. Um, okay, fire. Apparently, apparently, I disagree with this, but Sarah says fire should be low down on the list of options to yeah. consider. I I say you should do a cost benefit analysis because always remember fire is very inexpensive. It's. It's, Only at the outset. It's a hard worker. You got to think short term cost, long term co cost. It's a hard worker, and it 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 doesn't it doesn't ask you for much. You don't even have to pay fire benefits. That's yeah, the but it law. Will just take everything. Okay, that's capitalism. Um, we've <laughs> learned we've learned that the walk of shame is not what you think it is. Apparently, apparently not. It's just like those motherfuckers who won't stop saying bend the knee in 2021. Yeah. I'm I'm about done. I was the done. people still posting that fucking November 5th poem and they don't even understand what it means. But every November 5th, your whole Twitter page is remember, remember. Stop. Um, we've learned that when trying to steal a camera, you must remember it's a camera. Yeah. You're a little bit of an evidence trail, maybe. Um, and we, no matter, how, we've learned that no matter how much you fucking spent on your vacation, the mouse can still kick your ass out. Stupid. The mouse is all powerful. We reserve the right to refuse service. That is, it's everyone always remembers the customer is always right. They seem to forget no sheer, no shoes, no service. The other side of it, we reserve the right to refuse. That is that that's the one you everyone sort of like, well, I can do what I want. No. no. And finally, we've learned that if uh, the punchline to your April Fool's joke is I made you sad. You're not funny. You're just a sadist. Yeah. You're or just a bad person. Or maybe Dave Chappelle. 